Ready for a deep dive? Today, Aristotle. We're talking about the big ideas, the ones that people are still trying to wrap their heads around, you know, all these centuries later. Yeah, like his quotes. Exactly. They give us real insight, I think, into how he saw the world. All right, so let's jump right in. First up, we have knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. It's everywhere, this quote. But like, what makes it so powerful? Well, it's easy to say, you know, I like pizza and call it a day. Mm -hmm. But Aristotle, he's talking about digging deeper. Not just surface level stuff. No, no. It's about understanding like why you do the things you do. What motivates you? What are your values? What are you honestly good at? And what maybe are you not so good at? Ah, so it's less I like long walks on the beach and more like, why am I drawn to those walks? Is it being in nature, yeah, solitude. Exactly. When you know yourself on that level, it changes everything. How you make decisions, your relationships, how you navigate the world, recognizing maybe your own biases, tendencies. It's like that saying, know the enemy, but for yourself. That's a good way to put it. Okay, ready for another one? Give me with it. All right, so Aristotle also said, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Especially in our world today, right? Where we're bombarded with information constantly. So how do we apply that then? Just like question everything. Basically, don't just take something at face value, you know, whether you hear it from a friend or read it online, or even if everyone else seems to believe it, look at it from different angles. Play devil's advocate, even with your own beliefs. Exactly. Weigh the evidence. What are the counter arguments? That's how you keep learning and growing. That's how you avoid dogma, right? So we've gone from understanding ourselves to analyzing information, but Aristotle, he also talks about connection, like deep human connection. He said, what is a friend? A single soul dwelling in two bodies. Wow. It really makes you think, right? Yeah. About those deep bonds, those friendships where you just get each other. There's something there about recognizing that maybe those connections are just as important, maybe even more so than any kind of intellectual pursuit. Totally. And you know what? That actually leads perfectly into the next quote, which is educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. So he was saying that it's not enough to just have the facts. You've got to have feeling as well. It seems so. You need yeah. empathy, compassion, that ability to make ethical decisions, all the knowledge in the world. If you don't have those things. It's in a complete life. You could say that. Okay, ready for one more. Always. And this one I think you said was your favorite. He said, no great mind has ever existed without a touch of madness. I do love that one. It's a little bit dangerous, right? Yeah. But it's intriguing. So does that mean we should all just like embrace chaos? Hmm. I would say chaos. It's more about, I think, being open to different ways of thinking, challenging what everyone else accepts as the norm embracing new ideas. So that touch of madness could be the spark of creativity. Right. It's about looking at things from a fresh perspective, maybe even a little bit sideways. I like that. So much to think about here. This has been an incredible deep dive into the mind of Aristotle. Where do we even go from here? I think he's reminding us that the things he talked about, self-awareness, critical thinking, meaningful connections, that balance of heart and mind, those are timeless. They're not just dusty old ideas. They're just as relevant today, even more so than they were centuries ago. And maybe, just maybe, a little touch of madness isn't a bad thing. So what do you think? What resonated with you today? What were you
learned a long time ago, the best way to get back on your feet is to miss three car payments. You got to step up your game plan. You got to look at this for what it is. Something's happening up in here and it's different. And, and there's, there's no time to sit around and say, well, why does this have to happen to me? Why not you? Who would you suggest? You got to be like Zach Benson. Deal with it. Got to deal with it. I'll never forget when I was unloading the truck, going back to the house I moved my mother out of, my mother told me, hold your head up, boy. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Hold your head up. You have nothing to be ashamed of. And when you lift up your head, let me tell you something. Oh, anybody can have faith when you got a job, your marriage is working, you got money in the bank, your children acting like they have good sense. Nobody looked at you and told you that you are terminally ill. Oh, you can have faith then, but faith not tested can't be trusted. Listen to me. Listen to me. You don't know how strong you are until you have to be strong. And most people, they choose. It's always a choice. It's always a choice. Zach Benson, check him out. In the interview I did with him on my Facebook after my conversation with you, Jack Benson could have become depressed and turned to drugs and all type of self-sabotaging behavior as many people do every day. You can either live your dreams or live your fears. And I think the majority of people actually are not living their dreams, but are living their fears. What are your fears? What are you afraid of? What are you scared of? Because we all have fears, don't we? We all have something that's blocking us, that's holding us back. The reason that most people are not... It is in the treatment of trifles that a person shows what they are. One of the most dangerous things you can do is compare your life to somebody else's. It's not a race. It's your journey. Man is the measure of all things Protagoras. Never say maybe. If you want to say no, say no. Do not correct people if you could just as easily let it slide. Never forget your roots, but understand that you have to leave them to grow. David Goggins Introduction Everyone can benefit from the true meaning and philosophical teachings of Stoicism. Having the ability to choose how you react and respond can alleviate anxious and depressive symptoms. The Stoic way of thinking allows you to thoughtfully process and accept situations while giving you the power to choose how you react, handle, and cope. Stoicism allows you to control what you can and let go of what you cannot. It helps you to choose your attitude, to live in the moment, and make sense of your circumstances. Living a more Stoic life will give you the opportunity to live a mentally healthier, more balanced, and overall happier life. The carefully curated quotations compiled here are wonderful tenets to live by and help illustrate specific lessons to improve yourself. We, the authors, have embarked on this exploration of Stoic philosophy in our writings and in our daily professions where we assist individuals on their journeys of personal growth and recovery. We understand that this odyssey of continued self-education and improvement begins with you. All of us understand that Stoicism is one of the many tools you can use to help quell the suffering, to have a better understanding of yourself and improve your approach to living. It's gonna seem weird, but I promise y'all I know what I'm doing. It's gonna seem weird, but I know what I'm doing, okay? I'm old, I know what I'm doing, all right? So put your age in there. Now what I want you to put now is how old you wanna be when you leave this earth. Now here's the A, I don't care what religion, what 
put politics. One thing we all know, we ain't gonna be here forever. I, there's one thing I can guarantee y'all: you won't be living it like you. You won't be a, you won't be here 150 years from now. <laughs> I can guarantee you that you won't be a 150. You won't be here. So, so the real question is, how old are you? And then how long you want to be on this earth, right? Because here's here's why I'm this is this is why this is important. Because if you know you're not going to be here forever, then you're going to treat how long you're going to be here differently. So what happens sometimes when you're young, you think you're going to be young forever. I feel you. I used to be there. I woke up this morning. I was 51 years old. I was like, man, I'm 51. My grandma, I went to go see my grandma. She's 91. I was like, man, I remember my grandma was in her 40s. My grandma, 91. Now listen to me very closely. I'm not the don't say the no to drugs dude, right? You, you make whatever decisions you want. You do whatever you want to do. I'm here to tell you though, that you're not going to live forever. And so you have to decide then, if you're not going to be here forever, what are your 20s going to look like? What are your 30s going to look like? What are your 40s going to look like? Now I'm from Chicago originally, grew up in Detroit. 90% of my boys are not living the way I'm living. They ain't no different than me. Bob, as a matter of fact, Bob should all going to be speaking to y'all right now, not me. Bob was the one that got me off the streets of Detroit, I was homeless. Like for real, for real. I love rappers because rappers be in the studio doing that stuff. Being private, staying low key, and not telling everyone everything is self care. Nothing is actually as bad as it seems, or as great as you think it will be. God is the father of all men. Epictetus. Be slow in choosing a friend, slower in changing. Overtrusting, betrayal, masturbation, loss of energy, stress, hair loss, overthinking, depression, saying no to important things, revenge, ruining your own life, observing, increase in wisdom, forgiving, healing, letting go, peace of mind. Your purpose in life is to find your purpose and give your whole heart and soul to it. Deepak Chopra Remember that on the one hand desires command you to obtain what you long for, and on the other, aversions command you to avoid what you dislike. Those who fail to gain what they desire are unfortunate whilst those who fall into what they seek to avoid are miserable. So if you seek to avoid only those things contrary to nature, amongst the things that are in your power, you will accordingly fall into nothing to which you are averse. But if you seek to avoid sickness or death or poverty, you will be miserable. 2. Therefore remove altogether your aversion for anything that is not in our power and transfer it to those things contrary to nature that are in our power. For the time being, completely restrain your desires. For if you desire any of those things not in our power, you are bound to suffer misfortune. For of those things in our power, which it would be proper to desire, none is yet within your grasp. Use only choice and refusal, but use even these lightly, with reservation and without straining. You got a sheet of paper, right? Put the paper up on the wall and I want you to write it. Why? Because when you write it down and your eyes see it, you can do it. And listen to me, I believe this with all my heart. I literally flew from Detroit to Kansas today. I flew, guys. Watch this. 200 years ago, people said only birds could what? Come on, I'm just being real. 200 years ago, they said only birds could fly. No, no, a human wasn't meant to fly. Now, not only are we flying, we watching TV. <laughs> we watching TV in first class, they, they, they making meals. Right, in some planes you can lay down. I went to um, Dubai a few months ago and the, and, the, and the seat that I sat in, it was like a living room, a big old 30 something inch TV. They're bringing people steak and duck and all wine and all kinds of uh, sweets and snacks, everything. You can use your cell phone, imagine 